Hello, and welcome to Back to the Science. I'm Dr. Susan Oliver, and I'm a scientist, but I'm pretending to be an athlete. And this is Cindy Oliver, and she's pretending to be a unicorn. She really wanted to pretend to be an athlete as well, but I couldn't find a jersey small enough for her. So why are we both pretending to be something that we're not? Because today we are going to be covering a website that pretends people who aren't athletes are athletes in order to trick people into thinking that athletes are suddenly dying in large numbers. And that website is Good Sciencing. And this website not only spreads disinformation directly, it is also used by anti-vaxxers around the world as a source for ludicrous claims. And here are some particularly ludicrous ones from none other than Pierre Corey. So you think the big uptick in sudden death is, is clearly the vaccines? It's, I, I am not confused about it at all. Just look at the professional football players. I just did a review of this. You know, There's a website that has cataloged all of the professional football players. Right now, 1,024 are, collapses on the field with something like 780 deaths of young, healthy footballers and other athletes from around the world in 2021. Do you know what the, football or soccer? Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, football or soccer. soccer. Exactly. Sorry, soccer. you know, I, I always forget, you know, what right. to say. Yeah, yeah. So I, I love soccer slash football. And so foot, I, I football fall. to you, soccer. So a thousand soccer players that fall over down. a thousand, uh, and it's not all soccer. There have been others from other sports, but they're predominantly soccer. However. You know, they've done reviews of sudden death in young, healthy athletes over 30 years. You know what the average was in one year? 29 across the world. We already are over a thousand in the last year. And just in January of this year, there was 127 collapses and 87 deaths in one month, January. Now, before we go on to look at the website where Pierre Corey has supposedly got his football players deaths from, Let's just correct him on the number of football players who typically die suddenly every year. Pierre Corey in this clip claims that it's 29 per year across the world. However, if we look at this study here, which actually catalogued sudden death from 2014 to 2018 in football players, we see that a total of 617 players suffered sudden cardiac death which is over 120 deaths per year. And this is only for players of the former football known as soccer, not other football players and not other athletes. So why is Pierre Corey claiming it is 29? Well, it appears he saw the number on the Good Sciencing website and didn't do any due diligence to check if it was correct. His numbers on athletes collapsing and dying also appear to come from the Good Science in website. And again, he seems to have just accepted these numbers at face value without properly looking at the data. So let's go back to what definitely isn't the science and have a look at the website. So this is the Good Science in website. Now, the headline changes regularly, but at the time I'm recording this video, it says, 1,097 athlete cardiac arrest, comma, serious issues, 719 dead after COVID injection. It then goes on to say, it is definitely not normal for so many mainly young athletes to suffer from cardiac arrest or to die while playing their sport. But this year it is happening. Many of these heart issues and deaths come shortly after they got a COVID vaccine. While it is possible this can happen to people who did not get a COVID vaccine, the sheer numbers clearly point to the only obvious cause. They then try to set the scene by pointing to what they claim are sources showing particularly low rates of those deaths. They point to two documents. The first they claim shows that there are only 29 athletes per year under the age of 35 years of age dying which is a number Pierre Corey quoted. The second study they quote claims 66 deaths per year. 
They then go on to say the above shows that in prior years, there were 66 deaths per year, but there have been 87 reported in January 2022 so far. And obviously, they haven't updated this paragraph because it's now June. Now, I'm not sure if they're being disingenuous here or if they are just completely clueless about how to read scientific papers. I will show you the two papers and let you decide. So this is the first paper. It's entitled Sudden Cardiac Death in Athletes, the Lusane Recommendation. And I've got no idea whether I actually pronounce Lusane right or wrong. Now, this paper is a systematic review of literature that identifies causes of sudden cardiac death. It is not a paper that attempts to determine the incidence of sudden cardiac death. They were specifically looking at scientific papers that met a pre-specified criteria. Now, this is the second paper, and at least this is a paper that was attempting to quantify the number of cardiac deaths that occur in athletes. The first thing to note is the subtitle, Analysis of 1,866 Deaths in the United States, 1980 to 2006. In other words, this paper is not looking at the incidence of sudden deaths in athletes around the world. It is specifically looking at the United States. And they are also not looking at all deaths. They are only looking at those which met specific criteria. And I'll just read that criteria out to you. Individual athletes were included in the registry when identified through the aforementioned sources and if two criteria were met. One, the athlete participated in organised team or individual sports that require regular competition against others as a central component, placed a high premium on excellence and achievement and requires systematic and in most instances vigorous training. In brackets, they say individuals participating in only college-sponsored intramural sports were not included. And two, the athlete experienced sudden death or survived cardiac arrest at less than or equal to 39 years of age. Sudden death was defined as an unexpected collapse with or without physical exertion associated with a previously uneventful clinical course. So the 66 deaths per year number only includes athletes in the US who are currently participating in competitive sports that require intensive training and are under the age of 40. Importantly, they also only look at deaths that don't have another clinical explanation. Other people who have died in the previous years are not included in the 66 number. So does the Good Science in website only include people who meet the same criteria as the study? Let's have a look. This is the start of the listing of the reported deaths. Now, it includes both people who have died and also people with various other medical conditions. However, those that died have a red dead next to them. So it's quite clear. So the first one doesn't meet the criteria for two reasons. They're from England, not the US, and they're 51, which is not under 40. And although at 57, I think 51 is incredibly young, it's not normally an age that most people would call young. So the next person on the list is from the USA. He is within the required aid range, but sadly he died of cancer. So this is not a sudden cardiac death. We then have South Africa, Italy, and Scotland, none of which are in the USA, and then another person who has sadly died from the USA. Now, this gentleman appears to meet the age criteria at 38, but he is not a practicing athlete. He is a former athlete, and therefore, again, his death never would have been included in the 66 number. And it's also worth noting that the cause of death is unknown. So he may or may not have had a sudden cardiac death. So in a nutshell, the anonymous people who produce a good science in website are comparing apples and oranges. 
They have chosen a paper as their reference that identified a very narrow group of people, but then completely ignored this constraint and have compiled a list of anyone and everyone who has died, regardless of whether it was sudden cardiac death, regardless of whether or not they're actually from the US, and regardless of whether they are actually practicing athletes. I went through the website for the last year and counted up the number of deaths that potentially met the criteria that was used in the reference paper, and there was less than 40. And here are a few examples of the US deaths that were included, but definitely didn't meet the criteria. The four deaths I show on this slide, for instance, were all suicides. In the first two, they appear to be trying to imply that maybe they weren't suicides by putting suicide in quotation marks. And in the third one, they claim there was no explanation given other than she died unexpectedly, also in quotation marks. However, a bit of Googling soon shows you that she, in fact, took her own life. In the final report that I've included on this slide, they rather sickingly try to imply that the person killed himself because he felt guilty that he convinced his team to get vaccinated and the vaccine killed his friend. Needless to say, there is no evidence for any of this. This person here actually tested positive for COVID before their death, so it beggars belief that it is included as a supposed vaccine death. This poor boy who died after having a seizure suffered from epilepsy. Sudden deaths in people with epilepsy sadly do occur, and it is estimated that 3,000 people in the USA suffer from sudden death associated with epilepsy every year. This person died in a car accident. Again, not a sudden cardiac death. This young lady was not a competitive athlete. She was a cheerleader. Now, of course, you need some athletic ability to be a cheerleader, but it doesn't fit the narrow criteria that was used in the study where the 66 number came from. And more importantly, even if it did, the death is not relevant because she died of a heart infection. And putting the word heart infection in quotation marks doesn't alter the fact that a heart infection is a recognisable condition. I have a feeling that the people who put together the website have no medical knowledge and therefore assume anything that they are not familiar with must be some strange conspiracy to hide the truth. However, Pierre Corey has no excuse. He is a physician and therefore should be very familiar with heart infections. This young police officer who was a former football player, so not a current athlete, they describe as passing away suddenly. What they don't mention is that he died from a fentanyl overdose. None of the reports on this slide are actually people who meet the definition of athlete that was used in the study that defined the baseline rate of 66 deaths in the US per year. Some are former athletes, but they are no longer competing. And the three down the bottom can't, by any stretch of the imagination, be considered young. They are all in their 60s. Of course, I'm sure in a few years' time when I get to my 60s, I will then think 60s is very young. Now, I've just shown you a small sample of the reports on the Good Science In website that don't meet the criteria that they are claiming in their headlines. The vast majority are either not athletes, are not young, or did not die from sudden cardiac arrest. More importantly, for the vast majority, they provide no evidence that they were even vaccinated. Now, some of you may be thinking that it doesn't matter that all these people who died didn't meet the strict criteria and that it's still a lot of people dying. The sad truth is that a lot of people do die before their time. This chart here is based on data from 2005, well before COVID vaccines, and shows the annual risk of death by age and sex in the UK. And it would likely be similar in most Western countries, although potentially a little higher in the USA owing to the large number of homicides. 
As you can see, by the time you reach the age of 35, your chance of dying in any one year is over one in a thousand if you are a male. And by the time you reach 55, it's nearly one in 100. So although people like Pierre Corey and the anonymous producers of the Good Sciencing website would like you to believe that no one died before now, the data says otherwise. In summary, both Pierre Corey and the folks behind the Good Science in website are lying about both the people who have died in the past and the people who are dying now. And they are also lying about their vaccination status. In the vast majority of cases, they have no evidence whether they were vaccinated or not. If you'd like to look further into the data that I've presented, I've provided links in the video's description. And please remember this video is about the science, but you shouldn't take it as medical advice. For that, you should speak to your medical practitioner. Thank you for listening. If you found this video useful, please hit the like button so that more people will see it. And if you'd like to see more videos about the science in the future, please hit the subscribe button. Thank you.